Welcome back to our Richard's YouTube channel. Today's class, we learn how to make this beautiful side peplum princess that bustier blouse. It's a very simple tutorial and it is beginner friendly. This is what you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make this very this side peplum, there are so many variations to it. I'll just be addressing some of it. So this is one, as you can see, you can see that this is a bit shaped in a V format. You can see that the this is the center front where you have the zipper here, and the distance between the center front and where this flare starts is just around one inch or one and a half inches or thereabouts. Okay, and this is another one. Okay, so if you look at this, you notice that. This is quite wide compared to what we have here. So from the center front to this place now, it looks like they just maintain the nipple to nipple, which is also the bust pan measurement, which is around three and a half or four inches from here. And from there, they just slanted it to the waist. So there are so many variations to this depending on, okay, this is another one. This is another one, depending on what you want. But for this tutorial, I will be doing the one that is a bit bent. So for this now, I already have my, I'm using a princess that bust up a tap and I already have it drafted. If you don't know how to draft this, I have a detailed tutorial on how to do that on my channel already. Okay, so I'll just be highlighting how to do some of this variation. So for this one that looks like they just maintain the nipple to nipple point. So if you want to do this, for example, I'm just going to be noting it with a pencil because that's not the style I'm going for. So you can see our nipple to nipple line here like this so what you just need to do now is to go to your waist measurement so this are uh, our measurements here let me label it this line here is the bust point this is the under bust line this is the waistline and this is the hem which is also the hip line okay so to do this now for the one with the width where the you have a wide center front here so i'm just going to be maintaining my nipple to nipple measurement here which is around four inches for me and then the next thing i'll just do to create that curve for my side peplum is just to connect it from my side which is here i'm just going to connect it to the nipple to nipple point so i can just go up by maybe four inches which is here and then from my waistline here i'm just going to connect it like this and then I'm going to cut it out like this for my side peplum. But for the one that I am going for, which is a bit free, I'm not going for this design. So I'm just going to clean this off. So for the design that I'm going for here, you can see that it is not so wide at the center front. So at the center front here, I'm just going to mark one inch like this. And then from there, I'll go upwards by four inches. And then I'll mark the one inch again so that I can have a straight line. So from this point now, I'm just going to connect it using my slightly curved driller to the waistline. So I'm just going to find a good curve that's going to take everything all at once. And then I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw my cuff like this okay so you can see that it is smooth and this is the shape that I want to be going for so the same thing that I've done here now I have to do to the back panel also this is my back panel this is the waist measurement in the case of the back panel and then if you notice there is a bust that here so you can see that the position of our waistline for for the back is different from the front so this is the waistline for the front and here is the waistline for the back so by the time i close this waist that this bust that of two inches this position is also going to jump to meet up with what we have and if you notice on the m line also because i get this question a lot that people ask why their front bodies is usually different from their back bodies by the time they finish joining. If you watch my tutorial on how to draft a basic bodies, I explained extensively on the reasons why you may have these variations and how you can go about it. So if you're adding a bust that to this, you should know that by the time you close up your bust that, it's going to affect the length of your front 
side okay so you have to do that modification because you're still going to be sewing the front and back together by the time you are done so for it to match up you have to take note of that when you are drafting your back bodies okay so i have the back bodies drafted already also so just like i did for the front at the center front here i'm going to be going inwards by one inch and then i'll go upwards by four and then here i'll measure one inch again to make it into a straight line so once I have my straight line, like I said, there are so many ways you can do this. You don't have to follow this straight rule. You can form any shape from here. You can just slant into the M line, depending on what you want to go for. This is what I want. That is what I'm going for. This. So from there now, I'm going to connect it to my waistline measurements using my curved ruler. And then I have this. Okay. So now I'm done with this. Now the next thing is for me to cut this half close up my brows that and then i'm going to go ahead and cut this on my fabric okay so i'm just going to cut off this half now and if you notice when i was drafting this i did not start from my the curve did not enter into my seam allowance okay it started from here so you should note that because the seam allowance is not going to be part of the peplum we're going to be joining the peplum after we must have joined our front and back together so this is what i have for the front and then i don't need this anymore this is my main, main pattern so i'm going to cut this off now and then by the time i close up this that is going to match up with what i have on my waistline so let me just cut this so that i can show us what i'm talking about so let me cut this part for the back also this is the back pattern also and this is the front pattern so here i'm going to open my under my ham hole that so i want to transfer the bust that to the ham hole so after opening it i can open up this bust that now and then i'm going to close it so by the time i close it you can see that it has been transferred to my under ham and then i'll hold it with a tape so I've closed the dart now and then if I bring the side seam for the back together with this, you can see that it is now equal. So you can see what we have here. So this is what I was explaining. So I'll just cut off this dart now and then I'll transfer it to my fabric. Okay, so I've gone ahead to cut this on my paper. This is the back. I opt for a V-shaped neckline for the back and then I'm just going to take my dart at the back panel and these are the two front pieces so i just added allowance to where i'm going to be adding my peplum to i already indicated my allowance before drafting my bust pants so i'm not going to be adding any allowance to that so now the next thing is for me to go join them together i'll join the bust tail pass together and then i'll hold my dart for the sides also then after that i'm going to be joining it on the shoulder and then i'll shape the side so that we can continue with our peplum so now i've gone ahead to sew, join the dart you can see the dart of the back i've held the dart and then for the front i've gone ahead to sew in the bust here so after that i just joined the front and back on the shoulder and then i shaped the side with the seam allowance okay so this one what i did was hold this dart join it on the shoulder and then i went ahead to shape it on the side using this seam allowance that i left so now the next thing now is for us to work on the peplum. So to understand it better, I'm going to be working on the paper so that we can see what I am doing well. So now this is what we have. To cut out this peplum now, I'm going to get the circumference that we normally cut our flare. And this is going to be a full 360 degree flare. So to get my circumference now, this is going to be my circumference from my waistline to where my dart stops. And then from here to here is going to be my length. So now I'll just measure what I have here. So you can do it either way. You can either measure all this now to be your circumference and then your, your flare will just be dropping down. But I don't like that. So I just want my circumference to be from here to here. And then the length of my flare, remember all this is going off. And the length of my flare is going to be from here to this place. So here now the circumference that I have here is around four and a half inches. You're not going to be entering into your seam allowance because remember we've already joined our seam allowance. So from here to here now, I'll just take my tape now and measure it. And I have around four and a half inches there. And then for the length, 
I'm just going to take my tapering now and measure the length that I have here and the length here is 8 inches so I'm going to be cutting a full 360 degree and the same thing that I have there applies to the front also okay so this is the front and then if you measure from the waist to where the dart stops here you can see what we have we have four and a half inches okay which is here let me just detach it which is here you can see we have four and a half inches here so that's going to be the circumference of our flare and then for the length of the flare is going to be from the second dart leg all the way to the m line and you can see we have exactly eight inches just like we have for the front so now remember we would have we must have joined this on the the front and the back together on the side seam so this is going to be the circumference of the flare from this that leg all the way to the side all the way to the front so that we have four and a half here we have four and a half for the back also so the total circumference we need is going to be nine inches but the length remains the same which is eight eight inches for both front and back so to do this now i've already drafted my flare and then it's a full circle flare so I made the, the circumference which is 9 inches for front and back. I divided by 6.28 and that gave me around 1.5 inches. So I measured 1.5 inches for my radius and then I cut it out. And then for the length, I just measured 8 inches as you can see. So I made I measured 8 inches for my flare and I cut 2 for the two sides. So I have 2 flare here. So I want this to be a 3 step flare plug. So after doing that, I, just, I did another one with my plain fabric and then for that, the circumference remains the same because we are still going to be adding it to the circumference here. But the length differs. I deducted 2 inches from the 8 inches and that made it the, a length of 6 inches, which is what we have here. And then for the third flare, the, the circumference, the radius also remained the same, which is 1 and a half. And then I further deducted another 2 inches, which gave me a total length of 4 inches, as we can see. So now I'll go over to the machine now and first join them together by opening it on one side like this so i'll place the biggest one on top and then the next one is going to be the six inches like this and then the last one is going to be the shortest which is the four inches so i'll place everything together now and then i'm going to hold it with a stitch before i sew it to my flare so basically what i'm going to do this is our flare this is where we are adding it to and then remember the front and back yeah so here by the time you finish joining it i forgot to explain that you might have a shortage yes so i'm just going to blend what i have up okay it's not going to affect it i just i'm just going to blend so that by the time you finish and you see that you will not be confused okay so the same thing applies for the back also because of the that we joined i'm just going to blend that up okay so to do so this after you have joined them together the circumference part remember this is the circumference that we measured from one dart to another then these are the length of the flare so the part of the circumference i'm going to be adding it to it like this so if you want to pleat this you just need to add to your circumference so that you have enough room to gather or pleat so i'm going to be sewing that to this side now and then the length which is eight inches i'm going to be sewing it to the length of the peplum like this and like this so now i'll first of all join this then i'll show us what next to do so i'm gonna have to hold this together with a stitch like this so that will be easy for me to work with so i'll bring in my pattern and then i'm going to open it out like this so the first one i'm going to be sewing is this circumference so i'm just going to place the circumference the radius here against the hem like this and then i'm going to sew it so after sewing it on the radius then here i'm just going to leave like half an inch so that i can turn it easily and then i'm going to be sewing the length together so i've done for this side as you can see i just went ahead to sew my radius first then after sewing the radius i just sew the the length also so when i sew it this is what i will have and this is what my my blouse is looking like now so you're just going to search this or you just turn into a bias so this is the back and this is the front so the same thing i did here now like i said if you want it to have places you just add extra few inches to your radius when you are cutting it so that you give you room to place it so i'll go and do the same thing for this side also then i'll take to the mannequin so that we'll see what it looks like 
Okay, so this is our blouse. You can see the three steps that we have for our side peplum. So I used the Ankara so that we can see what I did very well. You just need to search the M line or you just turn it with a bias or whatever it is to make it neat. So this is the other side and you can see how beautiful it is. So if you want to pleat this like I did for just one of it, you just need to increase the m that is the radius measurement and this is the v-shape that i was talking about so if you want to maintain your bust span measurement you just take it straight from where your princess that line is coming you try to straight down like this and then you're not going to be doing this v curve that we did here i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye